Hi, I'm Nicolene Peck, and I teach parenting, self-government, communications, and in this video, I'm gonna be talking about average parents versus smart parents. <laughs> I hate to label any parent as average when I know that everyone is unique, but there definitely are mindsets that are a little bit more commonplace. In fact, I think there are many people who are just going with the social status quo right now and they are actually decreasing their positive impact on their own children. In fact, they might be missing great opportunities to really inspire their child to become the best versions of themselves to teach their child the skills they need for communication and relationship success just by kind of going with the flow. So what does the average parent do versus what does a smart self-governed parent do? That's what we're going to be talking about here. So one of the biggest things that I would say average parents do is they get reactive. So when something happens, the child misbehaves or the child does something that they don't like or they don't enjoy, they react to it with emotion. They dump their emotions out on their child. In fact, oftentimes they think this whole parenting thing has to do with how they feel as a parent, what they get, what they didn't get, and what people need to know about how they feel. But that's not actually what parenting is about. Parenting is about a learner, a child, that needs lessons from a teacher. The parent must teach not just react to the child. The parent has to have parental authority. So a wise parent maintains their parental authority and they prepare for success. So instead of being reactive, a smart parent is proactive. They plan for success. They don't just handle the problems in the minute. In fact, it is this difference between being reactive and being proactive that led to me and my family being featured on an episode of The World's Strictest Parents back in 2000. The BBC recognized that there was a difference between these parents that were raising unruly children and these parents that were raising children who were confident and they were driven, goal-oriented, and happy. And the difference was that the parents who were raising these happier children were parents who prepared ahead of time, who decided this is the principle we need for success. And then they lived according to that principle. Now you see, deciding a principle is true is one step, but living according to a principle is step number two. Many people don't ever figure out how to get their actions to match the principles that they hope to live by. In fact, that's another thing that your average parent does is they say, yes, this is true. I want honesty. I want good connection, good love and communication and mercy and everything else, but yet their parenting does not match their principle that they're going toward. They're reacting to their children. They're getting angry at their children. They're thinking in a punishment mindset instead of helping the children become the best versions of themselves and master their emotions and their communications. So it's because they don't have the skills that they need usually. I always say, you know, it's not necessarily the parent's fault if they become this average kind of parent who is always trying to figure it out from day to day and they feel like they're kind of drowning in this sea of emotion in their families and in their home. It's not really their fault because they don't know what they don't know. They know truth, but they don't have the practice to match those principles. So what I teach in my Teaching Self-Government course is actually all of the skills that parents need in order to live according to their principles, which is a real game changer for most people actually. Before I move on to my next points about average parents versus smart parents, I would like to invite you to hit that subscribe button on this channel right now because you are not going to want to miss all of the great content that comes out on here related to parenting, family relationships, and just happiness. Subscribe now. Average parents make excuses. I'm going to say that again. 
average parents make excuses. Do you make excuses? Do you know parents who make excuses for their behavior? How everything is somebody else's fault, or maybe they got up late or something happened or whatever it was, there's always an excuse for their own misbehavior. It's never their own fault. They don't take full responsibility. The reason why is because what I talked about earlier, that they're oftentimes wrapped up in how they feel. They're so busy reacting to what's going on around them that they don't ever take the time to step back and analyze themselves. So really smart parents maintain honesty and integrity on all their parenting, which means that they are not afraid to take an honest look at themselves as well as their children, meaning they're not going to be making excuses for their children either. They're going to teach their children the skills and principles that they need to be successful and not teach their child to make excuses for their own behavior. So what types of things might they analyze about themselves? They might say something like, you know, I always get this look on my face when I'm talking to the children or my voice tone gets a little upset when I first notice that something goes wrong. I'm going to stop that. I'm going to create a calm voice. I'm going to pull it back, put it in my chest a little bit, and I'm going to allow it to warm me and calm me down. That's my calm voice. My calm voice is not affected by anything that happens around me. My calm body is something that I've chosen all on my own. I've decided that this is what it looks like and feels like to me when I am calm. A wise parent makes those plans for themselves so that they don't fall into old reactive habits, things that they don't want to do. And a smart parent also acknowledges they're not perfect all the time. So they don't become a perfectionist. What they do instead is they just recognize, oh, it wasn't quite right then. I think I'm going to redo it again and do it the right way. Or I've got to remember next time to have my voice tone be a little bit more like this. Average parents often oftentimes will accuse their children of things. They will villainize their own children and say things like, well, you always do this. Well, you're just trying to make me mad or something like that when they're engaging in power struggles. This type of behavior is immediately recognized as a lie because every person knows that you don't really know what's going on inside their own head. And for you to make those claims is just a sign of weakness and control. The child immediately loses respect for a parent who makes those types of snap judgments in their behaviors and in their communications with the child. A smart parent will say, right now, your voice tone is not calm. Right now, you are not looking at me. They will describe what is true and they will say, when you don't look at another person, that can be a sign of disrespect or that can be a sign that you're not ready to have a good open communication or conversation about the problem. We need to get calm first, then we can talk about it. A smart parent knows how to help their child get to a place of calmness. That's also very important. Average parents will oftentimes talk back to their children when their children talk back to them. This is a problem because it gets into a power struggle all the time. If your child talks back to you in a disrespectful way, then what you should do is you should say, you are talking back to me right now. That is not disagreeing appropriately. What you should do is you should disagree appropriately with me, right? You immediately describe what they did, what they should do, and then you could go on with a correction from there. And we use disagree appropriately because that's one of the four basic skills that I teach in the teaching self-government parenting course. So that's why I referred to that skill. But I just describe what happens. I don't react to what happens. Proactive parents don't only make plans, but they also describe situations instead of reacting to them when they occur. One way that average parents will react that they may not think is reacting is coddling. Sometimes they baby their children and they do too much for their children. They don't allow their children to learn that they can be okay, that they can be calm. They don't teach them how to disagree appropriately and solve their own problems using skills and using their words. Instead, they keep their child in this infantile type of a state because the parent always handles everything for the child. So this brings me to just work too. Smart parents teach their children to work. Average parents or parents that maybe are struggling on getting the children to help out around the house are usually the ones that are only having children do a 
minimal amount of things at home. In fact, those are the parents who will often say to me, I don't ask them to do that much. Like they just need to do this little thing. Well, that's the problem. The child is not asked to do that much. A smart parent knows that you tell your child they need to do lots of things. They need to work with you on their own. They need to not be afraid of work. They need to be growing up which means that the parent has the responsibility to have them carry a heavier load. Average parents nowadays are really caught up in emotions, really caught up. In fact, so much so that they're not having emotional intelligence. And if you don't know what emotional intelligence is, there are other videos on this channel that can give you more information there. But emotionally intelligent people are people who recognize what's going on inside of them, who know what are productive emotions and what are non-productive emotions. And they know how to use the productive ones to bond and how to self-regulate or self-govern so that they don't get overpowered by the emotions that are not productive. Many average parents think that if a child feels something or if they feel something, then they should dump it out on everybody else. In fact, if there is one thing I'm asked all the time lately, it's like, but what about feelings? What about expressing feelings and emotions? Because they think that just because I'm saying a child needs to learn to keep a calm face, voice, and body, that there's no room to express emotions. Well, that's not true because when a family is self-governing, this smart parent, okay, that has good skills that they're teaching their children, they're planning for success, they're planning for the child to mature, that parent is also having good open conversations with their child on a regular basis. A smart parent would never neglect in that area. They would discuss things with the child all the time, but they would also be very open to saying, well, that feeling could lead to a not productive emotional response. So what do we do with it when it comes? What thought should we pick instead of this other one that could lead us in the wrong direction? That parent really helps the child sort things out, helps them see that they have the freedom to choose and to have powerful thoughts in order to move them in the direction that leads toward happiness and connection. There are so many more things that I could share, but instead of going into greater detail here, I think I'm going to give you a gift. The gift that I'd like to share with you is a course that I have called the Calm Parenting Toolkit. There is a link in the description below this video that will take you to the Calm Parenting Toolkit. It might say something like TSG Calm Toolkit or something like that. It's one of the links in the description. And if you go there with that link, you'll be able to get the Calm Parenting Toolkit for free. This Calm Parenting Toolkit will give you vital tools that you need in order to help your heart change and their heart change and to really progress on this path of being a proactive instead of reactive parent so that you can know you are doing smart parenting instead of just average parenting, which nowadays, quite frankly, doesn't seem to be leading to very great results. So click on the link now and we'll see you on that Calm Parenting Toolkit.